Hi, I'm Mark with SoundVision, where it's always our goal to simplify your life through technology. Today we want to talk about security systems. We do a lot of residential and commercial security systems. Part of those systems are the devices that actually are what sets off the security system. The most common of these is the door contact. So when a door is opened or closed, the security system recognizes that and can react appropriately. Additionally, there's devices like motion detectors. Now motion detectors don't actually detect motion. They're more of a heat detector. Think of the Predator in the movie where he sees a heat signature. And as it sees a certain size and movement of that heat, that is what triggers this device. You'll see these most typically about seven feet high and in the corners of a lot of rooms. The glass break detector is the second most common. And what glass break detectors do is they're looking for the sonic signature of breaking glass. Now you see I have two different options here. This is the most common and it fits in just a standard single gang box and is fairly flush. Typically you'll see these in the ceiling or down in the baseboards. The second option is a little bit more or less obtrusive, more aesthetically pleasing. This is a glass break detector that is flush mounted into a cup that is either, again, typically mounted in the wall or the ceiling. They both work the same way. These detectors will cover about a 25 foot radius around a room. So depending on how big your room or how many rooms that you need, uh, will govern exactly how many of these detectors that we need overall. The third detector that we do a lot of times is the smoke detector. And this brings up two different issues. The first is smoke detectors are inherently looking for smoke. So think of yourself as if it's burning bacon uh, while cooking breakfast and there's smoke that comes off the stove. That's what these detectors are looking for. There's two different, distinctly different smoke detectors in most people's homes. There's the smoke detector that the electricians install. Now these by National Electric Code have two rules that they have to follow. The first is they have to be inside every bedroom, outside every living space, and they need to be in certain situations where you have like an A-frame roof. And those are governed again by the Natural Electrical Code. The second is they have to have two power sources. The first of those power sources is your electrical system in the house. Exact same thing that powers a light switch or anything you plug into a wall. The second electrical source or power source is the nine volt battery. And this come, becomes very important in just a second. With our security smoke detectors, we have two different types. There's a wired version, so you can see it is actually wired. And here's what it looks like. And then a wireless version, if we haven't run a wire to a particular location and you want to have this. The smoke detectors that we install with the security system are also governed by the National Electrical Code and both do require to have two power sources just like the electricians installed versions. However, these aren't wired, hardwired to the house and they don't have the same battery backup that we talked about before. In the case of the ones that we install, these are wired back to or wires, wirelessly communicate back to the security system main panel, which is then plugged into the wall. That's power source number one. Their backup power source is the actual security system main battery. So if the security system were to lose power or your house or place of business were to lose power, then the backup battery would suffice as the power source for about a day or so. The big difference from a security standpoint is these smoke detectors are not just glorified noisemakers. They actually contact the central station in the event of a smoke or fire event and will have the central station be able to call out to the fire department to respond. Really important, regardless of whether you've armed or disarmed your system, even if you never use it, these are active all the time. So even if your system is disarmed and you're on vacation, these will react and alert the central station appropriately. The other, I said there was two parts, and the other part is the noise, because we get this call all the time in service. You'll notice on the electrical smoke detector that you've got an enunciator or a speaker. And we get the call all the time, usually at Friday or Saturday night in the middle of the night, where they start beeping at you. 
And so, rightfully so, most of our customers believe that it is the ones that we've installed for security. Our security smokes do not have any speakers built into them. They don't make any noise at all. If they set this alarm system off, it will come from the alarm siren, not from them. So if there is a noticeable or audible alert, it's coming from the electrician's installed smoke detector. That almost always indicates that the battery, the nine volt battery is going dead. Now, while you can replace any one of these, it's always our best practice to recommend that you go around and you count the number of these that are in your home and you replace all of them at the same time. I'd even go so far as to make an alert as to when it, you've replaced them so that a year from now you can do the same thing and you don't get woken up in the middle of the night on Saturday. So in closing, it's important to know what devices are in your home or place of business with regard to the security system and how they react and how they work. For any other questions, feel free to call us anytime or email us at support at svavnc.com.